Hey guys, it's Jay Snow with my top 5 Legion farming spots. So some of these I am not actually in Legion, and some of these some might be old, or you might have seen them already. But they're pretty reliable, and can net you enough gold for your wild token, and at least some of them. And these are mostly based on fun, and go how much gold per hour. So I did leave out a couple because they're a little bit too boring, but there are ways to make a ton of gold, of course, doing other different things. So let's go right into it. Alright, so our first farm of the day is in the Firelands, so if you, you can just Google where the Firelands is, and it's the Firelands 25 man raid. I'm not sure if 25 or 10 man makes a difference, I think 25 has more mobs, but I'm not exactly sure. So what you're going to be doing is getting the Potion of Treasure Finding, so if you look at the top right of my screen, you'll see a little thing that looks like a green potion. The potion of Treasure Finding goes for, on my server, about 600 gold. Could go both, go for way more on a bigger server because it's not really a mat that's farmed that much and it's pretty expensive to make so that's why it goes for so much but what it does is it allows you to get these little tiny treasure chests which gives you tons and tons of different kinds of cataclysm mats so right here after I get eaten by the <laughs> get feared and eaten by all the CC in this dungeon you'll see I'll get a bunch of tiny treasure chests now this is a little bit unusual you'll average about 10 tiny treasure chests a run so that this results may vary so, uh, what do you call it? So these tiny treasure chests have all different kinds of items, like volatile water, volatile air, all kinds of different stuff like that. As far, to, as, far as the mobs themselves, a lot of them do stuns. I think one of them does a net, another one does a uh, fear, and it's just it's kind of annoying. But if you do it correctly, if you just run past them, you should be able to avoid most of the stuff and pick up the mobs. So what you really want to do is make sure you get as many mobs in a pack as possible because it will summon a boss after you kill a certain amount of mobs. So for right here, the boss is actually summoned after you kill about usually three packs of mobs he gets summoned. You just want to make sure you avoid him. He just does a path around, so I just take this little risky jump and go around. So now let's open up these little treasure boxes. So you should average about 10 per run. I usually get about 8 per run minimum. And what you'll get is, as you can see, you'll get pyrite ore. So pyrite ore is pretty damn expensive for some reason so those usually go for if they're going for at least a hundred gold on your server then this farm is worth it because they usually sell off quick and then there's also volatile water so let's go through everything so volatile fire on my server goes for 39 gold volatile water goes for 55 gold volatile air goes for 37 gold volatile earth goes for like nine gold and pirate ore goes for about 120 and then Ember Silk Cloth goes for like 2G a stack, and Elementum Ore is pretty much useless. On, at least on my server, Elementum Ore is useless, even with the prospecting. I wasn't able to get any good gems out of it to sell. Then also, if you have a Disenchanter, you could take all the greens and disenchant them for Hypnotic Dust, which is used for Ember Silk Bags, I think. Enchanted Ember Silk Bags or something like that. So those are worth 50G a piece, but I will have to say that I was not able to sell any of the Hypnotic Dust, but I was able to sell off everything else now this farm is pretty basic the next one is just the broken isles herb and mining farm so what you'll need is the demon steel stirrups which allows you to loot things while mounted and dark moon fire water potion i think that's what it's called i forgot what it's called yeah dark moon fire water potion i guess just google dark moon fire water if i said it wrong but i think that's what it's called and what you're going to be doing is with that you can pick up uh herbs in 0.5 seconds and you can pick up, uh, you can mine nodes for about 1.5 seconds. And what this will do is you'll get every type of herb, so you'll get to diversify. You'll get to get fell slate, which unfortunately has dropped in price dramatically. And you'll be able to get laystone ore, which is kind of worthless, but I just pick it up anyway because there's a chance of blooded sargeras. And you can take the blooded sargeras and transfer them in Dalaran. You can transfer them to different types of materials. Usually I go for starlight rose because of my server. They go for 50 gold since the bots have been banned for the most part. And I think Blizzard's doing a pretty good job of banning the auction house bots. I mean, not auction house bots, the farming bots. The Starlight Rose tanked to like 20G to where it was pointless, but now it's pretty good. So what you're going to do is we're going to open up the map really quickly. So I'm just showing you how fast you can farm even with 50 mobs on your tail. You also need to be a tank to do this efficiently, or you need the leather working stirrups. I forgot what they're called. I don't think they're called stirrups, but... Unfortunately, I do not have the name of it, but there's a leather working item that allows you not to be stunned while collecting loot. So just, I guess, Google uh, leather working item that can't be stunned or something like that. 
and you'll get the name of that item. But I apologize for not having that earlier. So right here, if you just follow my mouse, I show the route that I take. So I just go around the Broken Valley, around a little circle in the middle of the Broken Valley. I go off to this island to the side. Uh, this island on the top has just Starlight Rose, so that's kind of cool. I mean, not that many herbs up there. Right by the Tomb of Sargeras is a bunch. I avoid the cave. There's two caves here by the Tomb of Sargeras. I just avoid them because there's not really much point going inside, especially since ore isn't as good as it used to be. Then on the shore, on the extra shore to the right side, there's some more Starlight Rose. And then I head all the way back to where I started, where, where uh, what do you call it, Ugh, where the Aether Roll is, where I was just farming. So overall, this will get you your token the fastest, as you can average about 10k per run. And it's just really, really easy gold. So if you're looking for that wild token, just mining herb, just go straight to that zone, and you'll get it really quickly. Now the next one is one of my favorites, is and really old and probably well known, but not well farmed, is the Den Wampers. So Den Wampers, I just showed you how to get there, and this is in Thousand Needles by a cave near the pirates in the South Sea Holdfast. So what Den Wampers do is they spawn in five seconds. <laughs> well, not exactly five seconds, but they have less than a minute spawn timer, and they are elites. So you do get a good amount of loot drops off of them. And what you're going to be looking for is the salt stone set. So I'm going to make a disclaimer right now is this is a transmog farm. So what does the transmog farm mean? Is you're basically just farming for cosmetic items. The only problem with that is it takes a while to sell. So if you're looking for your wild token or quick gold, this will not be the farm for you because it's going to take quite a long time to sell. So right there I get some steadfast leggings worth about 1.3k on my server. And see, that's that's not typical of your run, but you can get pieces like that, which are worth a lot. And then there's the salt, as I was saying, the salt stone pieces. I think salt stone leggings is one of the most expensive items going for around 7k, depending on your server. On my server, somebody farmed the crap out of them, so right now they're actually only going for like 4.5k. But still a pretty good farm. And what you're going to do is take the path that I'm doing, you're just going to go around and around in circles. And they should respawn. By the time you complete the full path, they should have all respawned. And it's also a great way to get silk from Mage Weave Cloth, so if you just happen to need that. Uh, here's some Trickster's Leggings, which sells really quickly. The full Trickster set. It doesn't sell for a lot, but for some reason they always sell really quickly. But you can get, I think, the full set off of these Den Whoppers. And that's pretty much it for this farm, so it's really simple. So I'll just show you the loot that I got from about 15 minutes of farming this. So I got kind of lucky. I think I averaged about 3k altogether as far as total worth of items, though the selling, by the time it sells, it might not be worth it for you. So right there we had 571g, a uh, piece of crap, uh, 760g, and then we had Soulstone Gauntlets for 854g, so I was able to pick that up. And then I got Symbolic Shoulders, which for some reason are worth 3k on my server, I have no idea why, but you know, that's pretty awesome. So that was the 3k, that was the money piece. And, you know, pretty simple farm, so, yeah, not much to complain about. I mean, just go kill, and you can do it at any level. You can do it at level 60 if you want, so it's a great farm for low levels to do. So, yeah, level 60, really easy. Next farm is this one everybody knows about, is AQ10, or 20, I forgot what it's called, but the one to the right. So if you look on the map, the uh, uh, Ancor G, whatever raid, can't even say it correctly. So what you're going to do is once you come from the entrance, if you just follow my mouse, the map doesn't look the same as this, but I'm not near the instance. You're just going to want to start from the entrance and then go to where you see the purple part. And the purple part has these little sandworms that are worth a ton. So they drop some of the most expensive pieces of transmog in the game, but it's like a 0.11% drop rate. So if you feel like hitting the lotto, or you think you're feeling lucky, then do this farm. But there's not much to explain here. You just run around, kill the worms, exit the instance, go right back in. I mean, it's not worth it unless you're really trying to push your luck. Today. <laughs> but you can easily come out with like 20 to 100k gold if you get lucky. Now the last farm is in Argus itself. Now this one took a huge hit because of the primal trade vendor which I which they never added but of course was gonna happen so if you go to cook you have to be level 110 to do this and then go past the hovel to this little cave right here you'll find Empyria more so Empyria more spawns on the first floor and the second floor so I'll just show you guys how to get over to there but this is pretty much gonna end the video 
So you just farm the ore here and then use the add-on cl add called server hop and you can switch between servers to just farm ore endlessly. So unfortunately this used to be 50 gold a piece as far as the ore. It was 50 gold a piece on my server so I made a truck. It was like 36k gold of uh, what do you call it an hour. It was absolutely ridiculous but now it's not really worth that much. But still good, especially since maybe they'll add some stuff in the next patch. So definitely hold on. This is one farm to look out for in the future because it might actually become even better. I mean, it won't be the same as before, but it could be better depending on what Imperium goes for. So there goes another node and you just go up and down, up and down. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like it as that helps out the video a lot. If Share it with your friends. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you guys have any gold making tips or maybe I messed up in the video and you want to correct that, feel free to leave a comment below.